Welcome to Bay Area Art Beat. This month we're coming to you from the Art House in Berkeley. We have some wonderful guests. The first one is Betsy Blakely. Hi, Susan. Welcome, Betsy. Thank you. Do you want to tell us a little bit about yourself and about the exciting stuff that you have planned for the summer? Yes. Um, after my husband died young, I wanted to make myself useful in a place where I wouldn't be seen as a pariah for being a young widow. So I started taking expressive arts projects to youth in conflict zones. And this summer, uh, many years later, we're taking a group of wonderful musical educators and performers to Jerusalem. Wow. Yeah. Great. So we're running a singing summer camp called Jerusalem Singing Camp for half Palestinian, half Israeli Jewish teens, and we're partnering with Jerusalem Youth Chorus Great. to run a two-week summer camp, an immersion in singing, body music, um, learning how to use a microphone, learning how to pass a lead, music skills, but they translate to life skills. Great. And they, the students are already lined up in, is, in Israel, Palestine. Yeah, there. half of them are uh, part of the existing Jerusalem Youth Chorus, which is a year-round chorus of half Palestinian, <laughs> half Israeli Jewish teens since 2012. And the other half about are newcomers. Great, yeah. great. So, and do you want to tell us about some of the other things you've done? Because I know you've done all kinds of exciting things, interesting yeah. things. Yeah. So, um, let's see, the first expressive arts project I did in a conflict zone was in Bosnia during the war. I remember that. Yeah. How long ago was that? That was in the mid-90s. Wow. So, uh, there was a summer camp called um, Global Children's Organization run by Judith Genya. Right. They were looking for a music teacher and I went and taught a music program for kids whose parents, whose fathers were fighting each other. So it was kids from all different sides of, uh, during the war, Serbs, Croats, and Bosnian Muslims. And then I met someone who invited me to go inland and um, continue doing this kind of work, but in a, uh, without the uh, umbrella of Global Children's Organization. So we went in inland where there were many fewer Westerners and ran a whole expressive arts program in the winter with no heat uh, or lights, wow. or <laughs> hardly any electricity, um, very little infrastructure of any kind. And we were um, teaching music, using art and writing to help mostly a Muslim uh, population of kids who'd been ethnically cleansed from the eastern part of Bosnia, and they'd landed in a city called Tuzla. So we ran a program for them for about six weeks during yeah. the winter. And then I went back many times and did some more programs. And then in this decade, I've been taking a team, a mashup of Arabic speakers and educators and musicians, singers, to work in refugee camps. Yeah. So in 2016, we uh, we went to Calais Jungle oh, in the incredible. sand dunes of northern France yeah. and had a wonderful program there for both youth and adult musicians. So we provided a platform for the adult refugee musicians who hadn't been able to perform since they'd left their yeah. countries of origin um, to perform three times. And it's refugee camp, so you make do and you have to get really creative about space. So the platform, the stage, was a converted horse trailer. So we performed on the <laughs> ramp of a horse trailer. Um, so that was interesting. Yeah. And then we um, went on from there to do another program in Greece the next year, and went back to Calais and did some more work in Calais. Last year we were in Lebanon working in a, um, a Palestinian refugee camp that had been in existence since 48. Wow. Three generations. Wow. Yeah, wow. that's incredible. Yeah. I, I, I think it's I think it's amazingly marvelous work to bring the arts yeah, to thank these you. people. I I saw the jungle at the current uh, yeah. last week. Yeah, and, it's uh, very exciting. I was like the drummer. One of the drummers in it was from the camp itself, yeah. and yeah. I mean there were a couple people who were in the camp and were in the production. Yeah. But 
It's just a wonderful thing you can offer people in a terrible situation. Well, that's it, is it doesn't address the root issues. I mean, in Calais, there were refugees from 22 countries. Yeah. So that's issues in 22 countries, each one of which is slightly different from the next. But it does offer something, the expressive arts offers something for people who are displaced, who have been traumatized. And the singing, I mean, there's a couple elements that we've developed over the years. One is that singing in harmony in a group releases oxytocin, which wow. is the love hormone. <laughs> so people automatically feel fond of each other when they're singing together. So that in itself adds a little bit of healing to a tough situation. And then the body percussion that we do, um, there are many, so many ways of using the body to make sound. And what we do with refugees or youth in conflict zones is we work with a symmetrical body music pattern because it really helps to realign a jangled nervous system. That's so I'll, I'll demonstrate that for you. Yeah, that Fabulous, that's fabulous. Well, it's also, I mean, that just sort of passing beyond the language, and I mean, in the play itself, that the happy moments were when they were singing, when they were dancing, when they yeah. were a community. And, you know, they were, uh, with the anger issues, that's a different yeah. story, but when they're doing the arts, they're a community, they're together. Yes. Yes. Betsy, thank you so much. It's been a great pleasure, really. Thank I, you. I love, I, you do such fabulous work in the world. It's just, thank you. and it's a pleasure to have you part of our community here. Thank you. And really good luck in Good luck Talk in you. We'll be right back with our next guest and some local art events happening in the month, in the month of June in Berkeley and in the area. Singing with our outdoor voices. back to Bay Area Art Beat. Our next guest is Harold Adler, who runs, takes care of, owns this wonderful place called Art House Gallery. We're going to have a chance to look around and see some of it. But first, I want to ask you, Harold, to tell us about you. Well, me, myself, and I, um, I was born in Oakland. and. I basically dropped out of college to come to Berkeley and, and start taking photographs of what was happening in the mid-60s. It was amazing times. The free speech movement, People's Park, the Black Panthers in Oakland. It was an amazing time to be a photojournalist. And I have some good shots. I only shot things I thought were important. The Black Panthers were important. The hippies were important. But People's Park was important. The, the protests against the war in Vietnam were extremely important. I was lucky I wasn't drafted. I'll tell you a quick story. I was on my way to Newport, Rhode Island Folk Festival to hear Bob Dylan, and I wrecked my car. I mean, I could have been killed. But fast forward seven months later, I went to the draft board with a letter from a doctor who got me out of Vietnam. So not getting killed in the auto accident, 
I didn't get killed in Vietnam either. I mean, I was right in the middle of it. You get rewarded for going to Newport for, for at Dillon's, least wanting to go to the folk festival. Right, Bob Dylan saved my life. Bob Dylan saved your life. <laughs> I'd be glad, yeah, happy to know that. Um, and th when did you come to Berkeley? Oh, so that's when you were in Berkeley and you did the photographs. Yeah, um, kind of mid-60s, 65, 66. Yeah. It was a thriving cultural place. I mean, people were sitting yeah. on the sidewalk, but they were playing guitars and singing. Yeah. It was a celebration of culture on Telegraph Avenue in Berkeley. It was amazing yeah. times. Yeah. I love Berkeley. Yeah, I, I came 67. Right. I was here for the summer of love. That's when, well, I was there too, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. So um, tell us more about the gallery. Well, this kind of began with a photography studio. This was a photography studio originally about 10, about 15 years ago. And then I took over as a property manager of the building. So I am the property manager of this building. And, and that gives me incredible leverage because I ran our art studios here. There's an art studio there, art studio there. And you just saw one of the artists up in, in the back, who's a Grateful Dead artist. Uh, so anyway, um, and I decided to make a gallery out of this space, which is my space. And so it, it's, it's mul multifunctional, really. It's a, it's a cultural center. It's an art gallery. It's a hippie museum. It's, it's a, I call it a 60s sandbox, you know. It's, it's kind of like hippie land, you know, Berkeley. But I celebrate ev the music of the 60s, the poetry of the 60s. Poetry Flash had their 45th anniversary here with yeah. some incredible poets. Yeah. Um, I've had some amazing people perform here. Lester Chambers performed here. Yeah. Uh, it's a Beautiful Day performed here. Some of the original 60s musicians perform here once, kind of once a week, more or less. So, and it's also about the celebration of the activism and social, social protests and, and civil rights of the 60s. Right. It's a celebration of the 60s and 70s. That's pretty much it is in a nutshell. Right now I have an exhibit of People's Park. Hey, Books just put out an incredible book about People's Park. So they, I have an exhibit now of People's Park up here, my photographs of People's Park, and 50 years ago. Yeah. And Berkeley is the most culturally enlightened city I've ever been to. I mean, I, I've crossed country a, a little bit, but I know that I just know from well, Cambridge was big and you know the, the folk clubs and stuff in, in the '60s. But Berkeley's always been a mecca for the arts. Yeah. And I'm glad yeah. I'm I'm glad I'm here. You, so this place also is available as a community center. You mm -hmm. have it available for people. Right. And um, I think we should mention that you have amazing recordings here that are for sale, their posters. It's, 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 it's an all-round, all-purpose art center, right? It, it does. It functions at a, it's kind of a, a cultural center, but also a bookstore, a record store, a poster store. I sell things here, obviously, it, as most art galleries do. Um, in fact, the painting behind us, I want to mention, um, it's done by Natasha Robinson, a Berkeley artist, but also Nicaragua and Northern California. She paint, did that mural about was it 19, 2014? And they licensed it for, for an uh, album, uh, 50th anniversary of Big Brother and the Holding Company is oh. Janis Joplin's record called Cheap Thrills. Yeah. The record came out four months ago, and that's the centerfold of the record. Oh, great. So it's Columbia Records' national release. It's one, it, puts, it basically puts that painting on the map. Um, but also I have like a, what do you call it, a, a green room, which is a real, it's a real hippie room, you know, a, a chill, kids call it a chill zone, I call it a, a green room, whatever. It's a celebration of the arts in every way, shape, and form, and I, I cherish being in Berkeley. I'm lucky I'm in Berkeley, because this place, it's the only thing like it. I think there's nothing else in the city like it, and maybe there's nothing else like it. It's in the city, and um, what else can I say? Um, but the most important thing I celebrate is the legacy of civil rights and civil liberties. I think Berkeley's most proudest moments were the free speech movement yeah. and, and People's Park and, and the, the, all the, the women's movement, gay and lesbian rights movement, the farm workers movement, all those movements really generated and centered in Berkeley. And there's a book that I, I actually worked on. It came out in 2001 at the Berkeley Arts Center called The Whole World's Watching. Right. That book is an incredible and, and kind of an it anthology is. of activism. Yeah, it's a and I encourage book. people to read it. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's really activism in a nutshell. I'm very proud of that project. So I'm just going to keep doing things that I've been doing for my whole life. And this is my, this is probably the last business I'll ever have, but I'm going to keep this going as long as I'm here. Okay. You know? <laughs> okay, good. Well, it's been a pleasure speaking to you. I, this is really, as you know, I, one of my favorite places to come and um, 
Thank you. Thank you're you welcome. for doing what you're doing, and thank you for being on our show. You're welcome. Thank you to you, Susan. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Bay Area Art Beat. A very exciting thing happening in June will be a concert by the Berkeley Chorus. And um, I think they get better all the time. But Mary Borders is with us, and she has been with the chorus for a long time. And she's going to go back and give us some reminiscences about the old days, or yes. Uh, the chorus started in 1965 as a class at uh, Berkeley Adult School. And with many changes and things that happened, the funding and things, uh, when the laws changed and the school no longer had the chorus, then it became uh, a chorus where we had to try and pay for itself, for the conductors, and get people from the community to come and join. It was no longer part of the uh, Berkeley uh, Adult School. Yeah. Do you remember when that was? Um, <coughs> excuse me. I think it was... No, I don't. I That's don't. okay. <laughs> it's been a long, <coughs> a long time ago. Yeah. You know, that's Good. I, I sang with them at one time, and it was a great experience. I sang when uh, Arlene Sagan was the uh, conductor. She was the conductor after Eugene left. Was, was Eugene Jones, was he the first conductor? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes, he was. Yeah. I, I, I've, I've, gone, I've gone to concerts and heard him conduct, but I, uh, okay. So, um, and who, do you know who is conducting now? Yes, Ming Luke. Okay. Okay. He's a young man who is very talented. Great. And he is very interested in music and in developing young musicians and allowing musicians to have a, a place to learn their skills and to practice being conductors, singers, soloists. Um, That's great. It's very in it's a very interesting experience for both. Yeah, when, when I was in the chorus, there weren't auditions, which I love, and Arlene said, just sing between two <coughs> people who can sing, and it worked out great. Thank you very, very much. You're welcome. Uh, so, welcome, welcome, David, and um, so you're on the board now. Uh, yes, I am. And um, do you, would you tell us exactly the dates of the, con the concerts and they were at Hearst Hall, right? The concerts are on June 21st, 22nd, and 23rd. The 21st is an evening performance, 8 o'clock, and the 22nd and 23rd are matinees, I believe at 3. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. great. That's important. And then you, will you be singing? Yes, both great. of us will be singing. Great. So do you want to say something about, oh, oh, first, I forgot to ask you, you want to say something about yourself. Do you want me to? To tell me a little bit about yourself. Sure. I joined the chorus um, originally in the mid-90s and was there into the early 2000s. And then I left the chorus for about 10 years. And then mm -hmm. when Ming became the new conductor, I rejoined again. Great. And uh, it's a great organization. I really enjoy it. it I, there's something about, as Betsy said, about singing with people that's just a very wonderful, wonderful experience. It is. Really, it is. it's a great way to com create community. It is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, and do you want to talk about the piece you're going to be singing in? We're going to be singing the Brahms Requiem, one yeah. of the classics, one of the choral master works. Um, yeah. um, 
as an organization lately, we've been uh, in the recent past and also in, in some coming uh, years that are going to be coming up soon, we've been doing quite a few pieces that are less well known. Yeah. But for this particular piece in the spring, we decided to go back to one of the old classics. Great. One of the reasons we chose this one uh, right now, as opposed to the Verity Requiem or Carmina Burana or one of the other classics, yeah. is yeah. because um, even though Ming has directed hundreds of pieces, he's never directed the Brahms Requiem. Oh, good. So and you're giving so, him an opportunity. <laughs> so we're giving him an opportunity, and we're giving uh, ourselves the opportunity right. to revisit a piece that we really like. Great. Great. So is there something else you'd like to tell us? Um, it's a fabulous organization. I hope many people come to see the concert. So do I. Um, yeah. We perform at Hertz Hall <coughs> yeah. on the Cal campus, which is a spectacular place to sing. The acoustics are, the acoustics are amazing much better thing, than yes. uh, we've sung at a variety of venues right. over the years. Right. And right. Uh, it really works well at Hertz yeah. Hall. Yeah, it, it does. Um, yeah, no, that I, I hope I hope everybody will get the chance, and particularly since um, it doesn't cost anything, they don't have any excuse to not go. I mean, that you you ask for a donation or um, the concerts are free. They yeah. have always been free. It's yeah. part of our mission to bring classical music to the entire community, irrespective of whether someone could pay for admission or not. Um, yeah. and of course we do accept donations. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and what what got you to serve on the board? Um, actually, um, it's the other people who are uh, on the board and running the organization. Yeah. It's just a great group of people. I've served on a few boards over the decades of different organizations. And this is a really strong board. Great. They do a great job. Mary, is there anything you'd like to add? No, I think he's done a very good job explaining <laughs> this. And I have not been on a board, and I do not wish to be on one. Yeah, no, I, a, you know. It's a little more work than I would like to do at this time. Yeah, no, well, it's wonderful. And you're still singing in the chorus? Yeah. Fabulous. I think the other thing I remember is that we used to have these great, um, <clears throat> I can't, can anybody join if they want to? Um, are there still? Yes, anyone can join for the Altos and Sopranos, the waiting list is quite long, many years. Yeah. For the tenors and basses, the waiting lists are much shorter. Okay, okay. One of the things I remember is that um, after the concert, people would bring this incredible baked good stuff, and we'd have these wonderful parties afterwards. I don't know if that's still happening, but it was pretty... We still do that once a year. We have yeah, a year-end closing party uh, after very, the final very performance. Sweet. And, uh, is this the year? -end? This isn't the year. -end. Yes, uh, after the Sunday performance, we will have a get-together for the whole for the whole chorus. <laughs> yeah. yeah, great, great. So I want to thank you both very, very much. Thank you for coming coming down here, and thank you for making the time, and thank you for the performance, the fabulous performance that I know you'll be giving um, at Hertz. And um, tell me the gate dates again. The dates are Friday, June 21st, Saturday the 22nd, and Sunday the 23rd. Okay. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And thank you for having me. Thank you. And we'll be back next month in June. There, as you hear the chorus, you can come and hear them in Hertz, um, the 21st, 22nd, and 23rd. And... Um, Please join us next month, and until then, stay amazed. Thank you, everybody.
פתוחים, חושים להסתחרר מסר.